Hiya fam, welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's movie time and we've got a brand new one. What's this today, Dan? This weekend marks National Godzilla Day. To celebrate, we're watching Godzilla Minus One. It's our first, like, Godzilla movie, monster movie for you guys, for real. Yes, it is. We've got ourselves some Japanese whiskey to go along with it. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. It's a messed up runway. Odo Island. This is a throwback to the original. I think you know what he's implying. Somebody's running away. Well, it's not like they're all willing to be kamikaze pilots, so... Hmm. Oh, they're fishes with their guts out. It only happens when they come up from the depths. I don't think so. Not unless it growls. Oh! Damn, that's aggressive. Very aggressive. Oh, yeah, what are you gonna do against that? I wouldn't venture out there to find out. Oh, they panicked. That's doing nothing. Oh, oh my god. Don't stand there. Find cover. Run away. Do something. Well, it's too late now. Oh my Jeez. god. It's like watching Jurassic Park. Yeah, you weren't gonna beat that thing no matter what. That might have happened anyway. Yeah. It's, they're in the middle of the damn war. <laughs> All these poor guys. What did he give you? I can see why she's angry, but... What a shit world to come back to. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, come on. Leave your child with another guy? Who the hell does that? What? Well, he's not part of the plan. Man, I'm barely surviving. What do you want from right. me? <laughs> I have half a shack. <laughs> Should be easy for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> too late now. Yeah, it'd be like that. Just deal with it. I said it'd be nice to have some company too while you're dealing with this tough time in your life. Yeah. Your choice. So you do give a shit. Yeah, say she cares. I say it's probably rare in, under the circumstances. That's very generous. Yeah. Oh, that's great news. Mind-sweeping, huh? Yeah, dangerous. Do what you gotta do, man. Right. Specialty boats, my ass. <laughs> That's just a fishing trawler. What's wrong with that? 
It's a bit disingenuous. I'm just saying. 米軍と帝国海軍は日本の沿岸に合わせて約6万個の機雷を撒きました。まあ種類は様々ですが、その中でも厄介なのが米軍の。So you need wood. Yeah. That doesn't make him specialty. That just makes him convenient, <laughs> right? No, that is. Senji was a Kaigun Kosho, the Heki no Kayats in Tatsati. Kotira wa Akitste Jo to Mizushima Kun. Interesting crew. I'm kind of with it. I like the idea of having a scientist on board. Sure. Kirai no Waya o Setsan Sir. So Sir, Kirai ga Mukia got the Kuda. Kuya no Kara ga Muskashin da. I was going to say easy work, but you have terrible aim. Yeah. Now that's useful. Useful there. The sense of it, that's a day got to get through. Ah, more just a long beat, that's a. That's a real kid. Seriously, you're lucky you avoided it. He's just a kid. He didn't know any better. He just wanted to be useful. That experience will give me nightmares too. Like you get told. Oh, you just happened to be there. He got fried by that. See, blowing up things is fun. <laughs> and under it the, pays well. Under the right <laughs> circumstances, yeah. <laughs> well, she's getting big. I know, look at Akiko. And the house is looking much better. <laughs> ah, a little hot pot. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys have been living together for a year and you're not married? Oh, I can't. He's the only father she's ever known. Seriously, this is the best thing that could ever happen to you. Right.私銀座で事務の仕事始めたの。いい加減自立したいなと思ってたんですよ。このまんまじゃ子さん、お辞めさんももらえやしないし。ああ。Come Intercepted、ship、dispatch、call、from、Pacific、fleet、attacks、WSS、Redfish、reporting、pursuit、of、massive、undersea、organism、through、Pacific、waters。うん、で、スポーティーだ。飛び出れんぼとの情勢を
There you go! Yeah! I had to do some damage. Oh no. What? His whole eye and everything just reformed. Oh, you guys are dead. Yeah! There good, we go! Good timing. Woo! Man, that couldn't have showed up any sooner. No. Oh well, my god. He's feeling those shots. All that ever does is piss him off, though. Holy shit. Shit, there's no match. Man, these people have been through enough. Jeez. Firing point blank is not making a difference. Oh, but by God, you're in the you're in the fight of it, though. Oh. What the fuck in the hell? That's powerful. Just vaporized that whole ship. You need to run now. He ain't interested in them anymore. Oh, yeah. Why should he be? Nothing can stop him. You got lucky. He could have finished you right then and there. What the hell can you do about that? If it's withstanding cannons from a battleship, you guys are screwed. What happened? What happened? He's ashamed. I was probably ashamed a little bit of would you believe the story if I told you. He's also just ashamed that he didn't fulfill his duty, I think. Right. Nobody's going to respect the Kamikaze pilot who came back alive. ひたいが故障した振りをして、不時着状に降りました。これはそこの整備兵の人たちが持っていたものです。俺は冷戦の基準で打ち殺してくれと頼まれました。でも俺は。Wouldn't you did, though. You did what you could with the weapons you had, and they weren't effective. No. Besides, she forbids you to die anyway. You're the future of this country now. Yeah. You need to accept that responsibility. I got no words for him. He just he just broken. I hate that for him. I hate that for him all. As long as Godzilla's out there, it's a dream it's a nightmare that would never go away either. Yeah. Just a constant reminder of shame that's not even real. Right. Oh crap, there he is. Did they even see him? Oh yeah. It's heading into Tokyo already, sheesh. I don't think so. That was nothing. Tokyo shook it off. That was your whole defensive perimeter? It's near Ginza, isn't that where she works? Oh no, yeah. Jesus. Oh, look at it, run! Of course there's a train! Why wouldn't there be in a Godzilla movie? Oh! <laughs> that landed right in front of him. Nice brakes. Shit. Huh. God, it's so big. That's what she said? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the street buggling under him. <laughs> you better hold on for dear life. <laughs> why, why are you holding on to this? There you go, right there. Unless he just decides to drop it now. And he did. Oh, look at these guys. Straight out of the original. Oh. 
that was close. Wow. You boys are brave for being up there. Yeah, or they're stupid, gonna be I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they're gone. They don't stand there. The good news is he's a slow mover on land. I guess by comparison. But he's so big, every step is like 100 feet. Yeah. Hey, he made it. Yeah. How the hell did you find her? That's a good question. Oh. He's still stepping on people. No. Here they are, the little tanks. It's about time somebody showed up. Damn it. Oh no. Good lord. It was basically a nuclear blast. No! Oh no. Good god. That pullback alone will, will, will destroy her. Noriko! No. I hate this for him. God damn it! I know. Poor bastard. What does this do for him now? This is this is gonna sit on his. Make him feel like this is his fault too. I say this isn't helping his uh, emotional state. No. They already dealt with like atomic weapons, and now they got to deal with more of this. Well, he's basically a walking atomic weapon. Yeah. <laughs> All that ashy rain is falling now. Yeah. Jesus. Thirty thousand, and then it just what walked away. And this radiation, they can't even clean it up. It's gotta suck, right? There's nothing you can do about this. Poor girl's been orphaned again. Mm. I didn't expect this to be so sad. It's hard times for people, and just yeah. nothing gets better. You may as well. That's pretty bad when you need the private safety to solve the problem for you because the government can't. That's nothing. That's a big ask. Yeah, フロンガスの泡は木片。フリオン、オッケー。最大震度1500メートル以上とゴジラに大量のフロンガスのボンビを装着し、短時間で相模湾に沈め、その深海の圧力で生き延びようと止める。だからそれがダメだったら呼び作
のりちゃんの敵討ち手だけだろなんでこんなことになる前にのりちゃん嫁さんにしてやんなかったんだ俺だってそうしてやりたかったじゃあなんでだよ戦争が終わってないんです Once Godzilla's dead, he's, he's free to live his life. Oh, yeah. What on earth is that? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Better nothing, I guess. Yeah. The problem is that he's a very good guy. Oh, yeah. If you can find him. Hopefully, he wasn't living in Ginza. That's a good point. Oh. It's gotta be easier to find a mechanic than this, right? There had to be others. Oh, there he is. <coughs> Attack you in the street. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's still salty about the whole Odo Island thing. Yeah, he knows you. <laughs> I got all your stinking letters. <laughs> I gotta think you would know that, right? You'd have to. You'd think everybody would know that by now, right? What else you got to do, man? Well, at least help your country. That gives you a third plan in case things don't work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he hadn't actually worked on one of these before, but I guess he wanted to. Should work functionally the same? Yeah. We got a plan. セッチされた外科系数艦から反応があったと報告がありました。ここと、ここにも。やってトキよ。ケットロー、what there you go. Good words. It's true, kid. Yeah. Yeah, let the old men make the sacrifice. Enough young people have died from this. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> She's so cute. うん。これはお母ちゃんと俺とアキコか。お母さんもいるんだよ。純粋にかけたな。ポアベビー。あきこ。She well, he's determined that he was never meant to live in the first place, so... Yeah. A manual release there, okay. That way nothing can go wrong, hopefully. Aki-chan! What happened? Are you alone? Give you a wad of money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, at least he made plans for her. I feel like they make use of so many, like, old school sounds. Oh, yeah. And recordings from the original movies and everything. Took you myself. No! <laughs> Come on! I think they saw that. Don't go kamikaze yourself, man. That girl needs you. This is the weirdest looking plane design. I mean, seriously. Looks like it was born without a backside. <laughs> he's scarred. You can still, still see he's scarred from it all.
Look at him out there. Jeesh. A tempo this. Well, he's got it all worked out. So this is a problem too, marching through their uh, agricultural areas. Oh my god, just stepped all over the dogs. Ah! Okay. Jeesh. It wasn't necessary to be that close. Yeah. God dang, dude. He might kill you if we get him out there. He's not exactly in a hurry to come get you, though. <laughs> My God, he just stays hot on your trail, though. Look at that. It's amazing how much his size makes a difference in his ability to move yeah. around. <laughs> Okay, they're getting him right out there into the trench area, huh? Uh-oh. No, not now! They haven't even got close to him. It's... Oh. Oh, it's a fake ship. Okay. Oh, Good God. That's still messed up, man. I wonder if this is exposing all of them to radiation. It has to be, right? Yes, he's got to regenerate his mana. Something like that. <laughs> oh, that old school Godzilla music. You gotta love it. It's so catchy. 70 years old and still works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> ah, dang, dude. Quit flying that close. Oh boy. They're gonna scrape. Oh, it's, not. it's cosmetic damage. Let's see, does he even know that's happening to him? He's got to. Do it now! Yes! There we go! Well, he just sunk. Damn! <laughs> sunk like a stone. <laughs> it is like rudely efficient, man. <laughs> you are a steely eyed missile man, Doc. <laughs> well, it did something. Just froze him down there, didn't it? Yeah. Either way, this is a bad day for him. Decompression time. Oh yeah, it's visibly messing with him. Oh, the things came off. You, yeah, what other choice you got now? Jeez. He's too heavy for those ships. Damn it. Man, that plane is foiled. Is it that damn kid? Yeah. <laughs> he was getting in this fight one way or another. All the tugboats showed up. Okay. Look at all of them. Okay, let's go quit here. Those guys can pull anything. Oh my god. That has to work, right? I don't see why not. That's a lot of pressure they're putting on him. I still wonder if the crane will hold, though. Man. Just like an air bubble coming up. Oh, he's all messed up. Look at him. Dude. Oh my god, he's still got strength to do this. God, look how menacing he looks. His white eyes. There's nothing they can do. That's it. That's all you got. You better hope your plan works. Jeez. Nick of time. Oh, he ejected. Okay, good. I saw that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah! 
Tell me that worked. It blew his head off. It had to work. Yeah. Good boy. Oh, good. He's alive. All right. There we go. Oh, okay, thank God. He forgave you. It did work. Yeah, now his energy is just tearing up from the inside. He's just falling apart. I know you're not saluting Godzilla. <laughs> I was going to say, why are you saluting a monster? <laughs> that better be for Tachibana. Or for Shikishima. Shikishima, yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and gloriously, none of you died. Yeah. That was his telegram? No way, hold on. He's alive. I'll be darned. How is that even possible? I don't know. That better be a yes. You better marry her and have a family with her and Akiko here. Right. Things gonna work out better. Godzilla's dead and you got your family back. I mean, yeah, the Yeah, you this definitely was not your time. No! Well, I guess it's not over. I mean, yes! <laughs> Godzilla will return. Fantastic. That's my kind of ending right there. That's a great movie. A terrific movie. That was fantastically done, man. Man, all these other Godzillas put to shame. <laughs> That has to be straight up like one of the best Godzilla movies ever. I've seen like all the live action Godzilla movies, and I would agree this is a top three Godzilla movie, no questions asked. I'm trying to, and I'm thinking back all to the, I haven't seen all of like the old school ones, but I'm, but I have seen the original. I love King Kong versus Godzilla. Despite what you think, I love Godzilla versus Megalon. <laughs> I and mean, that doesn't match up to this at all. Everyone has their preferences, that's fine. <laughs> But, like, if nothing else, it's a top three. I still haven't seen, like, 2000 and whatnot. Yeah. But this, might, as far as I'm concerned, this is sitting on top. Top three would be this one, the original, and then 84. Okay. And there's the similarity between all three of these in that all these are, like, the only three that have a really serious storyline to them. As you look at the original, you got kind of the love triangle going on there, and you got the whole morality surrounding the oxygen destroyer that ultimately leads to, you know, Serizawa, Serizawa choosing to sacrifice himself at the, end of the, at the end of the film. Right. And then in 84, you've got some more of the uh, U.S.-Soviet tensions, kind of like what they're discussing here, but it's a lot more pronounced in that movie. Like, at one point, they actually fire a nuke on Japan. Oh, wow. To try to stop Godzilla. In that way, it's a very serious film. This one, though, I think, by far, has the best storyline out of the three. Okay. No questions asked. The human element in here is so good, you could have made a standalone film without Godzilla, and it probably would have been an award-winning film. It was almost just a movie about coping with the, you know, the, the aftermath of war. Yeah. And Godzilla happened to be a nemesis getting in the way of you dealing with it, you know? Yeah, and, and that goes back to Godzilla's origins. You know, his whole thing is that he's a reminder of the dangers of nuclear weapons and right. the dangers of war. And so it fits perfectly with the theme. Right. And him being out there, you know, sweeping for mines as his job, mm -hmm. you know, that was a good way for him to kind of get over that coping because you're still near the danger. And, you know, it's like this could have been a good way for you to not only kind of face that danger head on, mm -hmm. but also still provide for a family and maybe one day realize, man, I... I can't be near this danger anymore. This, these people depend on me. So it's almost like but, a, it's almost it taken like, away from him. So yeah, it's almost like a physical representation of picking up the pieces that you lost during the war. Yes, yes. Which the, a lot of that was being done here. Mm -hmm. You got to see a lot of humanity and a lot of people, I think, and that, and that was kind of one of those things that always baffled me about World War II, specifically in the Pacific Theater, mm -hmm. because I've, I've heard the stories. I've, I've seen i've seen the uh documentaries read in my history books just as you did mm -hmm. you know there were atrocities like absolute like evil atrocities done right in that in that theater of war no they were done on, on the on the uh on the other side of the world no doubt but over here it's like you know it's it's like it's like you you don't forget stuff like like what was done there 
and then you actually see the people that were involved and it's like man they were even some of them were probably happy to do it but a lot of them were just these guys here they yeah. were just they were just people following orders too and they didn't want for there to be no point in anything they were doing so and you're right you know in, in our history books you know we talk about you know the fire raids on tokyo and other parts of japan but you know when we're looking at it from the american perspective we're looking at it as of hey it was part of our successful waging of the war you know when we look at you know what happened in tokyo we look at it in terms of you no know, stats people killed land destroyed from here you see it from the opposite perspective the people living there the people who have to live with the outcome of that result yeah you know it, it's a different perspective because you do realize these are humans you know you as much as you might have hated them in the moment there's still people trying to live their lives just like anybody else you know you you can equate that to how things go today because we have problems with people all around the world but even in countries that we are adverse that, that we consider adversarial mm -hmm. they're still just people yeah living they're trying to live their lives and you know we're they're they're caught up between two governments doing what they're doing and here it's like yeah you're right it's all about picking up those pieces and trying to find purpose in your life now yeah and, and i felt bad for shikishima because he was living with the guilt and shame of not living up to his title as a kamikaze pilot because he didn't he was afraid to die. He didn't want to die. Right. He wanted to live. And the worst part about it for me was how much people were blaming him for coming back alive. When I there was no reason to. I yeah. Mean, when he was on Odo Island, they even said, you know, it's clear what's going to happen. We're going to lose this war. There's no sense in, you know, needlessly risk, risking your life like that. One guy over there was okay with it. The fact, too, that he messed up on Odo Island by not shooting at Godzilla when he had the chance. I mean, like you said, it may not have worked. We don't know what Godzilla's capabilities were when he was a smaller dinosaur. It would have been sure. It would have been a certain death for him. Possibly, maybe not, but I mean, because he never pulled the trigger, nobody knows for sure, and so people are always going to have that doubt in their mind, well, maybe he could have saved those guys. I'll say this, he might have done that, but Godzilla might have still killed him. And that's the thing. Stepped on the plane, then it's like, man, but he didn't want to die either. Yeah. So I know that's his job, is to, you know, fly into, fly into death, mm -hmm. but I don't think he asked for that. You know, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like it was something he, he asked, he said, one day I'm, one day I'm doing this, the next day I'm a kamikaze pilot. Right. It's like, so yeah. Well, and he there, wanted to live like those guys did too. It's like he, he felt like his life mattered as well. And there's a certain irony to it too because, you know, the term kamikaze means divine wind. You could make an argument mm. that it was his destiny to survive to kill Godzilla in this moment. God dang. Wow, you just blew my mind there. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Because, you know, his parents were telling him to come back alive. All these other people who were around him were saying they need him to be alive and be there for his family and for his country. And in the end, that ends up paying off. He saves the people of Japan from certain destruction at the hands of Godzilla. Sure he did. Hopefully his war is over then. I can't imagine it still being, he'd probably still have nightmares, but I can't imagine it being a driving force in his life anymore. Presumably. I hear there are talks for a sequel. That'd be so badass. I don't know what you would do with a sequel because if you put Godzilla against more modern weapons, I don't know what kind of effect that's gonna have on it. They could, they could go the same route as the first one. Maybe this Godzilla actually is dead. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing there is just after effects of the of the radiation that he's just got part yeah. of him. There could be more like him out there, though. Potentially. There's a whole, like, monster verse there. I say, if there's one dinosaur out there, presumably there's more. Yes, especially if they, especially if at some point they discover, like, a Hollow Earth thing here. Yeah. So, which they're likely to do because they appear to be very resourceful and smart. Mm -hmm. So, I wouldn't be surprised because... Now that you know he's a thing, it's like, where did you come from in the first place? That's you know? a fair question. Yeah, because you just showed up. One day you're just there. Yeah. I mean, you've always just been a creature of myth, but now all of a sudden you're just on our, on our island waltzing, waltzing around. You know they're going to they're gonna explore the past there. Mm -hmm. So if there's a sequel, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they got away from this storyline and these characters altogether and moved on to a different one there where it's like still the same world, but you're seeing it from different people now. I think that's likely. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Godzilla, I really like the design for the Godzilla in this movie. Oh, he's great. It, it's kind of a mix of the American and Japanese styles because he's got that kind of traditional old school man in rubber suit look to him, but they kind of bulked him up, gave him a more organic look, kind of more like the American one. And it works really well because he feels like an actual living creature, but still faithful to the original Godzilla. I thought so too, because because I'm what was it what was it I said to you when he's walking through Ginza? I was like, man, he looks like my action figures right. from, from back in the day. He's slow yeah. walking. He's just kind of taking his time, but he's still doing massive amounts of damage. It really is. Like he was, 
He was a lot more lean when he was smaller, I thought. When he was smaller, he bulked up in the in the midsection there. Big when time. he was smaller, he was like a T Rex almost. Yeah, which is actually kind of cool. I like the way that they had, they had that design for the smaller one too. But you know, I think it makes sense when he bulked up that he was a little bit slower moving. I mean, to to us, he looked slow moving. To him, he probably felt like he was fast. I mean, but you get him in the water and you can't catch him. I said he's perfectly agile enough to do damage. But he can do it on both land and sea, and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. so, but he was an incredibly destructive force. His atomic breath there certainly represents the horrors that they went through from the atomic bombs that were dropped See, on. That them, was ridiculously powerful. It yeah. practically wiped out that whole town. I'm not surprised that it takes him time to regenerate there. But I mean, I feel like it's like, wow, you could have... Is the next Godzilla still going to have that? Or is it going to be like, he's just a fire-breathing monster now? Even that would be destructive enough. But the atomic breath there, it's like, wow, everything he aims it at... Yeah. You know, it gets obliterated for miles, like it was an actual atomic warhead. Mm -hmm. So it's like that's ridiculously overpowered. <laughs> yes, heck, every time he uses that thing, tens of thousands of people are gonna die. Yeah, how many died in that one? Thirty. Thirty thousand. That's serious casualties. Yeah. For one breath of. Death. He was he was on land for all of ten minutes, maybe. And there he is, he loves his trains too. Yeah, which kind of reminds me, you know, there's a lot of throwbacks to the older Godzilla films in this movie, too. I mean, he just walked around with it for a while. You know, if you want to distract him, really, just leave some trains out, old trains out there for him to go by that. You know, he does kind of have a uh, an eye for moving objects. Just, yeah. Planes, trains, and automobiles. That'll get his attention. Very similar to T-Rex there, huh? Yeah. Vision based on movement. Yeah. But yeah, you know, they had the train scene, which was reminiscent of the original. This movie starts out on Odo Island, which was part of the original thing, too. Okay. Remember, in the original, Godzilla was part of a myth on Odo Island. The scene where the, uh, where the photographer's on top of the building and that comes crashing down with him on top of that, it. yeah. That's just like the radio Ripped tower. straight out original. of the original, yeah. I'm pretty sure all those guys died, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, except Godzilla was walking around just setting Tokyo on fire. Right, there's a lot more flames in the original, but, but there's a lot of callbacks to the older film in there. Yeah, and I love the, uh, like, they brought back the old Godzilla music, too. The traditional Godzilla music, yeah. yeah. I kind of wish they kind of amped it up a little bit, kind of like um, Bear McCreary's version in King of the Monsters from a few years ago. Okay. But, you know, it's a classic theme. You can't go wrong using it. Yeah, but I still like the uh, the big dramatic Here Comes the Breath of Death music, too. Cause oh, like, yeah. You got the choir and everything. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Like, yeah. that. like, that really set the tone. Like, you know things are going to go bad <laughs> when you hear that music. Yeah, but, you know, it's it was such a good movie. Mm -hmm. And I really can't wait for a sequel to this if they I do just, one yeah. yeah if they're in talks for it then great because this was this was fantastic and it puts like all the spectacular yeah it puts like all the ones that came out just in recent years to absolute shame mm -hmm. you because know, this one was done perfectly and on a smaller budget from what i from what i could tell yeah that's the thing that gets me too like this thing is an academy award-winning film for its effects yeah and <laughs> it did it on a small budget when will we ever learn again I don't know. I hope we do. We need more Japanese filmmakers in the U.S., I think. Maybe, but even I think even their uh, resourcefulness and their efficiency. Not only did you see it in the in the movie when they're when they're trying to figure out a plan to stop Godzilla, but it's on display in their movie too, mm -hmm. like in in just how it's set up. They they did what they could with what they had, and they were incredibly good at that. You know. Yeah, I love the plan they came up with to kill him. Like it's, it's like very grounded in science, but it still takes a certain degree of imagination to make it work. It did definitely, and there was something they could do on the fly and be ready for. It. Yeah. It's like okay, all we need is canisters of freon. It's like okay, the one thing we have plenty of probably. We just need ships to get it to him and some freon and some uh... people to maintain these ships. Yeah. And the best part for me was it's like all right, you're finally giving these guys. A fighting chance rather than sending them off to their deaths and i love the message from uh oh, for, from the doc there uh noda yeah from noda yes to these guys about how uh about how how, how much they uh they they viewed life as you know too much of a cheap thing there yeah it's like you know we, we've developed all these things with no consideration for saving anybody's life it's that it's that old samurai you know principle of you know either you win or you die trying right. and you know unfortunately it gets a lot of people killed needlessly and you can't afford that right now, not after a war, not after having lost so many people. You need everyone you can to come back and help you rebuild for the future. Right. So it was fantastic. It was a great message. And it's like, yeah, we're, you know, we, we've survived. And now and that's our that's our opportunity to do things differently. Mm -hmm. It's like, because the way we were doing it just wasn't working anymore. If that samurai way were to continue, it would be even worse today. Yeah. Way worse. 
there is there was was another another reference there that I thought about too at the end there where we see the uh, Godzilla flesh at the bottom of the ocean it does kind of remind me of a giant monsters all out attack because that kind of ends the same way too with Godzilla's beating heart in the water. Giant monsters what? Giant uh. Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, Giant Monsters, All Out Attack, I think it's the whole title. Oh, okay. <laughs> and all that's left is Godzilla's beating heart? Yeah, at the end, Godzilla explodes from the inside, and the movie ends with seeing his beating heart in the bottom of the ocean. Just beating? Okay. Because yeah, Godzilla never really dies. Okay, so almost a spoof movie here. <laughs> at the amount of references there. Yeah, and there's probably more than that that I just didn't catch, but they're in there. Right. You know, I think for me, the one thing I just, I will, I keep drawing back to though, and I know it has nothing to do with Godzilla, mm -hmm. but it's just the odd couple pairing up family. Yeah. That I guess, that, that I guess we had there between a uh, Noriko, uh, Shikishima and Akiko there. Mm -hmm. It was almost like that was brought on by Divine Wind too, as you, as you Certainly. Would say. Certainly. It kind of spontaneously happened, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's just in a bad way trying to rebuild their lives and they were good together because they could make it together. They, what, they what, could depend on each other. That's what makes the film so good is, you know, seeing them, you know, work out their problems together. Yeah. You know, a lot of Godzilla films, you just kind of wait for Godzilla to show up, and the rest of it was just kind of, you know, unnecessary exposition to get you there. I was actually, actually cared about the family. I cared about the family dynamics going on here. I care about watching them rebuild their lives. Yeah. Albeit the few times you do see Godzilla, you know, they really made that count. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And so, but, uh, but I mean, that family dynamic you could really draw on, you could really connect to, I think. And I felt so bad the entire time for poor Akiko there. Oh, because, yeah. She, like, like she, was, she was just kind of like the little heart and soul of the movie there. Every member of her family just keeps dying or supposedly dying. Yeah. You know, she, there's nothing she can do about it. Just that representation of how bad it was for children in the war, too. Yeah. So, Fam, I think that's where we're getting things here, guys. But as always, if this is your first time with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. Come see what we're up to over there, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys.